But I think for me, opening day, the magic of that is it's nine months of preparation, eight months of preparation for three to four months of, of action. And it's all the work we do. And it's not just me, it's a team. We all work to get the woods ready, to get food plots ready, scouting deer, monitoring trail cameras. It, it's all just, it's, it's part of the unbelievable sport that is bow hunting whitetails. And I just love it because I know we've spent so much time working to get it all perfect in an imperfect sport. And I just love the fact that it's gonna be frustrating and it's gonna be long and grueling sometimes. But at the same time, that big boy can walk out any given time and there's just no better feeling in the world. And that's what we do from opening day. It's 2011, we're somewhere in Wisconsin, and Mike is still continuing his search for redemption. Heading out to a, a stand on a hay field. Uh, there's a bunch of acorns right down below the stand in the ravine. Uh, we know they're, they've been feeding in the acorns, so here's to hoping that one comes out tonight. out in a spot that it's kind of a pinch point so we're trying to catch them coming out of the corn heading back into the timber that we don't touch it's kind of our sanctuary um, I actually had six doe come out of it last night but we're out here to shoot whatever walks by really big doe or big buck doesn't know how lucky she is that she was just a wee bit too small. She would have been about another year older and just, she gave me 50 chances to shoot her. At Whitetails Inc., we do all the work and don't hunt with outfitters or guides on huge pieces of managed property. We're do-it-yourselfers just like you. Some call us crazy, and honestly, we may be a little psycho. We document our hunts on camera, enjoying the outdoors as much as the kill. We have extremely high standards and only compete with ourselves. The only thing that makes us special is our level of dedication. We may not have all our fingers, but we more than make up for that with our sweet mustaches. Welcome to Whitetails Inc. This episode of Whitetails Inc. is brought to you by Wicked Tree Gear, Ozonix, scent elimination that works. White Knuckle Productions. Vortex Optics. Monster X Mineral. Lone Wolf Tree Stand. Stick and Pick Trail Camera Mounting System. Tenzing Outdoors. Arborware. And Covert Trail Cameras. It's uh the doe season in Wisconsin. It's a four day doe season, which is stupid because I want to shoot a buck, but I guess I'll settle for a doe tonight. We're going to try. We got to wear the blaze orange, which is fun. Not. was awesome. That was awesome. That was super duper. He, 
I think he's probably only three and a half, but he's a if if it wasn't for this bowl season or this doe season, I would I'd have been contemplating. That would have been a that'd have been a game time decision and he probably would have got one because I had every chance in the world to shoot him at ten yards. Thirteen. Okay, I mean twelve point five I believe is where he was at. He'd have been, he, he's going to be a hard one to pass if we get another crack at him. We're in the same spot that last week during the dole only season. We had a nice buck come up and say hello to us. He's a pretty cute, pretty cute old guy. He wasn't a, a shooter. I thought he was. <laughs> I, I had about 15 minutes to look at him and I just kept making him bigger and bigger in my mind until he was almost booner status by the time he got up here. But we went back and watched the footage again. <laughs> yeah, he definitely wasn't a shooter. But anyway. Got everything packed up. We're actually going to go mobile tonight. We got stand, sticks, all set to go. Tyler's got his stand. Um, we're going to hang on a, on a section of woods that they bed in the one half, and the other half is really open. Um, basically, we're going to be between the bedding area and a uh, fresh cut cornfield. So. Hopefully we're going to catch them on their way from bed to food tonight, so. sat down and it looked straight in front of us and I'm like dude die. there's a deer out there hand me your binos so you can get me his, his binoculars and uh, put them up and it was a point that we've been we've seen three times now yeah this is the third week in a row we've seen he's just a little too young he's gonna be pretty good though in a year or two so. and he wasn't more than 25 yards out when he made that scrape up there Welcome to part 35 or something like that of the Flynn Tussle hunting experience for the fall. Uh, we haven't had any luck so far. We've got a buck that we're calling Alan and that's about all we've got. So we're running a little bit behind so we're going to duck down over this hill, jump in the stand, shoot 150, 160 inch deer, find him, film him, get some ostrich recovery footage. Be back home before dark. Those are Tyler's uh, sexy pants. He uses those on special occasions when he really wants to bring the deer in. We've got snack lunches and lunchables and some dried fruit from Walmart and some nutty bars. And not like the good ones, the actual bars with nuts, so. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're gonna try to do an all day sit today and see what happens. Hopefully, we won't have to be here all day. Now, if only we could have about 140, 150 inch or do that. I'd be, I'd be happy. Matt.
poop's huge. Oh my god, I would hang was a bag. <laughs> I was just choking to Mike. I was just choking to him. I'm like, Mike, let's both take a nap. Because when I shot mine last year, we were both sleeping. And we were just choking. We were just like, yeah, let's, he's going to go first. God, I hope I hit him. I hope I smoked him. Mike just looked at the footage, but like we thought, there's a there's a bunch of brush up there. So we don't know if it squeaked through or not. He just he couldn't tell with the camera. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump down real quick and go try to find my arrow and see what and see what it looks like. I'm just <laughs> so nervous right now. I can't. It's kind of I want to go up there and find out, but I kind of don't want to go up there and find out at the same time. I shouldn't have shot. Found that my knock is busted. I don't know, there's some kind of... I, I can't find the rest of my arrow and there's... I found two or three leaves with spots of blood up there, but... Yeah. But not... Not, okay. not a lot. So I don't know. I think we'll go up there and just take it 50 yards. Just to where we've seen him go through up here. and Let's take the time, pack our stuff out first. Yeah. Yeah, we'll give him time. Yep. So, like, that's... Uh, that's what we're dealing with. Yes. That is... Yes. Oh, my God. Yep. 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 And yep. Ugh. We can't find any blood, so we're just gonna. We followed for like 50 yards. The arrow fell out. I mean, we hit one. Like I, I want to say long. I, I do, because it looks like there's bubbles in it. Um, but like I said, we found the we found the shaft, and there was a chunk of fat, like five feet after that and then there's no more blood so we're thinking the hole might have plugged up pretty much the worst feeling in the world right now you know you hear on TV and stuff all the time the host will say you know you never shot, found a buck that you've shot you just haven't been hunting long enough and you just think, oh no, that won't happen to me. I'll never get put in that circumstance. At least I guess I was arrogant enough to think that. And now, now I'm sitting here with no buck in my hands and I just keep replaying it over and over again in my head. And just, I shouldn't have done it. I should have just waited. I don't know, you know, it's, it's too late to think about that stuff now because it happened and so, I guess tomorrow morning I'm gonna be running the camera, not have a bow in my hand. We're in a tree stand that we've sat a couple times now. <clears throat> uh, I think the last time we sat here was when we saw Alan right below us. It's actually a pretty nice morning. It's cold. We're hoping to sit here all day. Uh, hope we see one of the big ones that we got running around. I think they finally started to come back onto the property. Young buck, off to a good start. He, sh he should be a good one in a few years. So, hopefully, we see a big one. Preferably not on that same path. You know, he can come a little closer. But yeah, it's good. Deer up and moving. We're a little disappointed that we're not seeing much. You know, there's some there's some guys, big boys running around. It just looks like I picked the darn the wrong darn tree again story of my hunting career.
just sitting here at the end of the night and uh, we had a doe and a fawn come trucking across the field straight towards us. And uh, we, we saw the buck to, it, like at the exact same time. He came hauling butt across the field from across. He must have been on the far hillside watching that cornfield. When those does came in, he got up and he was beelining for that doe. Chased around a little bit, sniffing. Um, it's a nine pointer. We've got some trail camera pictures of him. Nice young buck. Not a shooter yet, but he's a pretty good looking young buck. Oh. So now uh, we're on the back of this hay field. Um, there's a big pinch point here. We, when we set the stand this summer, we figured that this would be the stand for the rut. And uh, we had a camera on here for about a month now first two weeks we didn't have a single picture hardly I think we had one spike buck or something ooh and then all of a sudden within the last week week and a half the camera just exploded there was like three shooter bucks that went by um, a lot of midday a lot of midday activity so we're sneaking in here well the wind is not great but okay we're expecting them to come out of this bottom anyway, so it should be all right. The buck is right behind her. He's a big buck. I was expecting him to come out of the valley, and at this point it was not great, but it should work. And where did they come from? The worst possible place they could have came from. <clears throat> but it was a shooter buck. I have a really good yell, a good look at him, because I'm trying to look through a tree. But that doe took him, took him down in the woods. Swirling so bad right now that I don't know if she'd have kept coming along that fence line or not. But I mean, the wind is just killing us right now. I just needed a little luck. I needed the wind to come out of the west like it was forecast to do, and things would have been okay. But what do you do? It's hunting, I guess. We sure hope you enjoyed Mike and Tyler's 2011 season. Be sure to join us tomorrow for their 2012 season. Good luck to everyone heading out this fall. Remember, be safe and wear your safety harness. I've uh, recently started wearing this, or me and Todd and the rest of the White Knuckle crew have uh, kind of run across this company called Arborware. And it's clothes actually designed for arborists, tree trimmers, but I ran into it, it's some high quality stuff. I mean, it's probably 80 degrees out right now, and I have this, uh, it's called a Tech T. It's very lightweight, very breathable, uh, perfect for early season, you know, whether it's hot summer tree trimming, whether you're out in the field velvet footage, whether you're farming, whether anything, trimming trees, and even early season hunting, even, even a base layer for, uh, you know, walking into the stand during the rut. Uh, they also have, see if I can get my knees up here these badass pants they are tough as crap uh, you can beat the piss out of them and they come in a variety of like browns um, check them out arborware.com really cool clothing a variety of stuff uh, hardcore whether you're a farmer whether you're uh, an avid hunter or you're just an outdoorsman they have clothes for everybody and it's durable too and it's you know affordable as well.